Hey guys, it's been a while since I've used my Yoder loaded Wichita. I probably cooked on it 10 times and then uh, basically I didn't even clean it. I took the ash out of it, but I just covered it up and it's been sitting for about two months or so. So I'm going to give you guys the first look at it. No editing. I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like when it's been neglected. Hey guys, here it is. My Yoder loaded Wichita. Doesn't look, doesn't look much loaded right now, does it? Um, so the first thing I gotta do, uh, you know, I always wear some gloves first, but um, I use these little tarp clips um, to keep the uh, tarp on it. I, I think I use about an eight by 10 tarp here. Um, and so I'm just gonna get some of these clips off, put them over here. Uh, I got some various sizes and stuff. Um, you know, it's it's a cheapy tarp. You know, this thing probably cost eight or ten bucks. Um, it's probably the cheapest that uh, Lowe's had, and uh, for good reason. There's a little one there. I, I like to weight it down a little bit with these little clips. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this off. Let's see here. I got some up. Oh, got that big clip right there on the on the door. Okay. There we go. Now I'm ready to pull this off. There it is. All right. First look in like 2 months. Uh Everything looks okay. You know, it doesn't rain a lot here on the uh west coast but it uh we're near the ocean so i definitely get some of that ocean air so what i did make sure that i did after the last cook is you know i i uh, take the ash out ash could be pretty corrosive so i definitely clean that out into my uh metal pan or a metal uh tub there um so i usually try to keep that clean so i guess i got a little redemption right Okay, now i um, got some extra mesquite down there. One of these days I'm going to use it. Um, it looks so nice, I just leave it there. Honestly, I don't really cook with mesquite, but I think the next time I, I use this, I'm going to heat it up with the mesquite and then actually cook with some of this hickory or pecan, maybe some apple. Uh, but the mesquite, uh, for me, just a little too harsh. Let's open this thing up. Okay, oh, that's, that's where... Uh, Deb's missing foil is, uh, don't tell her. Um, oh, I was looking for that too. Criminy, okay. And um, well, here's the uh, clean out that Yoder includes with the smoker. And uh, oh, there's my, my fireplace tongs right there. But uh, you know, usually they're more useful than here, so. Get a little zoom right there. It's not bad. That, and that's the top rack. I, you know, I never used the top rack, so I'm just going to take this out. Throw it on the ground. The rack I use is the bottom one. And, you know, it's it's still, it's not that dirty. You know, I, I do kind of wipe them down uh, before or after I cook just lightly. But, you know, I haven't used any uh, real uh, cleaner on these. Um, so... Let me pull these out, show you what's underneath. Might be kind of scary. All right, yeah, yeah, there we go. So, um, oh, by the way, there's my uh, my port uh, that I installed. I'll do a link to the video to it. It's holding up pretty well. It's actually perfect, uh, actually. Let's get this uh, secondary grate out. Yeah, wow. I'd say it probably just needs good uh, scraping. I'm not even sure what that is right there. Um, it's got the little typical rust right there. You know, this part of the plate um, actually baffles the firebox so that the fire isn't looking directly up at the grates. It forces the hot air uh, below that quarter inch plate there. 
uh, and the prog progressively larger holes kind of in a sort of a registered fashion uh, allows more smoke and heat as it cools off uh, should be more on this end here and then it uh, goes out up there yeah that uh, that exhaust stack right there so um, I mentioned this before one of my mods I'd like to do is move this to the center so that it's with that main grate level uh, and actually increase the diameter to match uh, the factory hole. So I'm probably gonna use this piece, cut it out here and weld it in down here, seal this hole up with whatever I take out down here and, um, and save this as scrap, but I, I wanna get a five inch diameter, inner diameter exhaust, you know, um, I'm sure you guys know this, but one of the key tricks to smoking with these wood-burning smokers is airflow. It's not about choking it down and letting all that smoke settle on there. That's creosote. That's just going to screw up your meat. And then people are probably going to say, God, it's too smoky. You know, you probably heard that. Uh, you obviously you should always have a nice blue smoke, clear smoke coming out of that exhaust. But you need airflow. And I've been really... Uh, kind of perfecting my technique on the firebox side. I'm using the proper size chunks now. Um, you know, I'm you know, give, give you one example right here. Okay, this is the size chunks, maximum size chunks that I'm going to be using for now on. Um, they're just right. And as the saying goes, if it's too wide to fit in your door, it's too big. So that's the right size right there. So. Um, four or five of those at a time i'm um, actually once you get going good it's uh it works really nicely um so so that's what i'm going to do um plus um i've noticed that the the upper thermometer zone this one here which is with that one uh with that exit right there is always you know about 25 to 50 degrees cooler than down here. Now, obviously, this is near the firebox, and I get it, but I'd rather have a nice, uh, even flow. When it comes out of the firebox, you know, um, I want that smoke and heat that comes up through those holes and radiant heat to continue over the meat and then right into that exhaust, but I don't want it to, to you know, shoot up. So I've seen... Um, tutorials do that to their smoker and they even got rid of their uh, giant plate here and I think what they did is they went with bars um, or not or I think they just did the baffle over here um, but that's what I want to do um, probably first thing I'll do is uh, relocate that stack and and not really mess with this uh, tuning plate right here and just see that uh, what that gets me because um, I definitely have a uh, um, different kind of heating zones and then what I'll do is a uh, uh, biscuit test and um, see uh, how that works. Decided to go ahead and pull out that tuning plate and uh, do a waterless uh, kind of cleaning. Uh, basically I just took a scraper, uh, any old putty knife will do, and I basically just scraped the front and back and then uh, did the same thing in here. Um, just really kind of knocking down really the, the worst of it. Um, you know, cleaning out the rails a little bit and just giving it a general inspection. And, uh, you know, that's really all it needed. And there we go, back in. Um, I like to use a tuning plate where there's no gap right there. Um, let me show you in here. Kind of tucks up under there, see that? So, if you guys have been following me a while, you know I've, I've built my own smokers a long time ago and uh, I go in a little bit how I design my own uh, baffle um, with these stick wood burning smokers, even charcoal smokers. It's really important to baffle that fire chamber from the cook area, okay? Uh, unless you're looking for a certain specific style that's kind of wild and crazy, but really the, 
you know, once you got your smoke chamber closed, you need to be able to regulate that heat in here evenly. Um, and a good thick, you know, quarter inch steel, see that quarter inch there, there we go. Quarter inch steel smoker like this Yoder loaded Wichita will retain enough heat that when you have a smoker lid down, you know, you could open and close this, this uh, firebox uh, occasionally, uh, or even just leave the side open, throw the wood in there, and it'll do minimal disturbance to your temperature over here. Um, again, I like to smoke with the exhaust wide open. Um, this is really more of a rain cap, I think. Early on, I used to think this had something to do with regulating temperature, but not on a stick burner. Maybe on a Traeger or pellet grill, but not on a stick burner. Burner, you want that wide open. I guess my winter inspection is over. Oh, the bottle opener is still there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Again, I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit about uh, my smoker and kind of how I maintain it. You know, I feel kind of guilty I haven't touched it in a couple months, but I think this weekend we're going to be uh, cooking on it and be watching for that video. And folks, if you haven't already, check out our Patreon patron page for the cost of just a 7 Eleven coffee. You can see some early release videos, uh, early access kind of videos, a few days or a week before it's actually posted on YouTube, and some behind the scenes stuff, and a lot of other stuff that has nothing to do with barbecue, kind of just me and Sassy goofing off and traveling and doing things like that, uh, plus a lot of other stuff, plus you get a sticker. So anyway, um, folks, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.